Well, there's so much to see and do here in the district of Saturn that I've had to divide the video into two parts. We're heading straight down the famous Saturn Road. This connects the Lumpini area to the river, and it's a very historic and affluent part of downtown Bangkok. Along the way, we're going to see some famous landmarks, some unique history, some fabulous architecture, interesting people, as well as some unusual stories and a slice of local life. Welcome to Secrets of Saturn, part one. So Saturn has always been synonymous with money, power, penthouses, high society, the most expensive property and land prices in the city, as well as the financial district. Bangkok's Wall Street is just down the road here. It was also where the first ever land development project in Thailand took place. And up until the 1980s, there were still lots of big houses on large plots of land around here. There aren't so many now. And these days, this part of Saturn Road is well known for its very tall office towers and condos, some of which have some pretty interesting architecture. Saturn Road is actually two roads either side of the Klong Saturn Canal. One side is North Saturn Road, the other is South Saturn Road. And to complicate things a little bit further, the district boundary line is down the middle of the canal. But more on that a little bit later. Just behind me over the road is the old King's Hotel. And when I first saw an old photo of it, I thought surely a building like that wouldn't still be standing here in Saturn. But it is, it's now the Embassy Saturn Hotel. It looks like its best days are well behind it. It's got the typical architecture of its day. It opened in 1959. But nowadays, given the redevelopment of the area, I give it another 10 years or so. There aren't many old style mansions left on this part of Saturn Road, but I've developed a bit of X-ray vision because on the other side of this wall is number 19 Saturn Road. And this is a house that dates back almost a hundred years. This is the plot of land that was once 37 Saturn Road. It's now being developed as the brand new Superlie Icon Condo. But I've got a picture of the old house that was 
37 Saturn Road. I think this picture is 1947. Another thing you might notice are the kangaroos just behind me. This is a legacy of the old Australian embassy that used to be here as well. And the agreement between the architects and the developers was that there'd always be a memory of the old Australian embassy on this plot of land. A bit like the old Queen Victoria statue round the corner from the old British embassy in Plonchip. Saturn Soy 3 is Soy Suen Plu. You may have heard of it, you may have been here. There's some nice places to eat, drink, and listen to great jazz music in Suen Plu. Well, you may have stayed here many years ago when it was a bit of a traveler's hub. Once upon a time, though, it was a small village surrounded by canals, orchards, and beetle plantations, and that's where it gets its name from. These were grown by Chinese migrants who would sell them across the river at Talad Plu Market. About a century ago, it was quite common for people to regularly chew beetle leaves, but in the 1940s, the government started a campaign to try and get people to quit because they were sick of cleaning up red stains on the pavements from the saliva that people would spit out after chewing them. And those that chew beetle leaves quite regularly will get permanent red stains on their teeth, which is not very attractive at all, especially on a blind date. In the past, there were lots of large houses on big plots of land around here, as you would expect in Saturn, one of which was lived in by American professor and soil scientist Robert Larrymore Pendleton, an expert in agriculture who resided in Thailand at various points between 1930 and 1950. He took these photos from his house and office at the nearby Department of Agriculture, which was where the Immigration Department now stands. Another nearby house was Collinston House, a uniquely designed mansion lived in by Emily Collins, a renowned botanist who left the house to the British government in her will after her death in 1945. The house was used as staff quarters by the embassy until the land was sold off in the late 1970s. Interesting bit of history, Emily Collins was one of the first members of the Natural History Society of Siam that was established in 1914 and it was thanks to her that the mosquito-eating fish, the Gambusia, was introduced into Thailand's waterways in 1929. The Kong Saturn dates back to 1892 during the reign of King Rama V, which was a major era of modernization in Thailand. King Rama V commissioned a businessman named Chao Suiyon to dig the canal as a trade route from the Klong Hualompong all the way to the Chao Phraya River, 3.2 kilometers. 
In those days, the Hall on Pong Canal ran alongside Rama 4 Road until it was filled in in 1959. The earth that was excavated during construction was used to build a road on the north and the south side of the canal. And after it was completed, King Rama V was so impressed that he awarded Chao Suyon the royal title of Luang Saton Ratchayut and named the road and the canal after him. As a further gift, he was given the rights to the land on Saton Road and he divided it into plots of 240 square metres. These plots were sold to wealthy foreign merchants and noblemen and this was known as the first ever land development project in Thailand. Here's something you might find interesting. Well, it's interesting to me anyway. That sign up there is the district boundary marker and that means North Saton Road is in Bangrak District, South Saton Road is in Saton District. The district boundary line is actually down the middle of the canal. So there's a bit of a fun nerdy fact for you. Maybe a future mastermind question. Well, today I was hoping to visit the Ku Grit Heritage House and Museum, but unfortunately it's closed until further notice. And that is a real shame because this was a man who lived a very eventful life. He was Prime Minister of Thailand from 1975 to 1976, and also a man of many talents. Anyway, here's the story. So Kugrit Pramot was the 13th Prime Minister of Thailand from 1975 to 1976. Often described as a model intellectual, he was a man of many talents who led a very eventful life. He was a successful banker, a political journalist, a horticulturalist, a renowned author who published his first highly acclaimed novel in 1953. He was also a classical Thai dancer an actor, a TV commentator, an ambassador of a Thai culture worldwide and was professor of Tamasart University. He entered politics in 1945 and started the Progressive Party, the first political party in Thailand under the constitution. In 1950, he started the Siam Rath, a daily newspaper, and his satirical and unique sense of humour in documenting political and social events in a fast developing Thailand won him many plaudits.
Last couple of clips I'm going to show you of Kugrit Pramort are from the 1963 film The Ugly American. This was filmed in Thailand, but it wasn't set as Thailand. It was a completely fictitious country. And Kugrit plays a prime minister of this fictitious country, and arguably the highlight of his acting career, opposite the great Marlon Brando. Mr. Ambassador, I'm happy you could accept my invitation for lunch. I look forward to a frank exchange of views. So do I, Your Excellency, and I appreciate you seeing me so soon. Patience and moderation, Mr. Ambassador. To overreact is often less effective than not to react at all. Have another brandy? Oh, well, thank you. The Kukrit Institute is right here next to Suen Plu Park and this is at the bottom end of Soy Suen Plu where we were earlier on and this is a nice little pocket park where you can get a bit of peace and quiet, listen to the birds singing, get lost in your own thoughts and there's also a couple of cats hanging around which means I'm now all out of cat food but never mind. Anyway, we're not quite finished with this area just yet. Well, I'm not quite finished with this street just yet because I thought as I'm in the area, I will mention a place that used to be at the very end of Soy Nantar Mozart and I featured it in an episode of Vanishing Bangkok. It's the Babylon Resort and Spa and it was a place where gay guys would go and hang around the swimming pool in big numbers, having orgies, parties, all that kind of thing. And it closed its doors in 2019. I suppose if it was still open now, you'd definitely know about it because they're the pride flags all down the street. So before we head off down to Chong Non Si, I thought I would give you a quick heads up about the spelling of Saturn. You've probably seen two different ways that it's written and neither of them are actually wrong. It's just one of those inconsistencies you get when you translate Thai place names into English. By the mid-2000s, there were a lot more skyscrapers around Saturn Square and Chong Non Si, and as a result, a lot more people were coming to and from work around here. And there used to be only a couple of footbridges across this intersection, which were getting very crowded during rush hour, so Bangkok City Council thought we'd better build something a little bit bigger. And in 2010, the Chong Non Si Skywalk opened, and now this is on the bucket list of every single photographer who visits Bangkok, and it's also appeared in quite a few Bollywood movies and music videos.
The area around Chongnong Sea BTS station is sat on square and up until the SkyTrain opened in 1999 there wasn't actually a lot going on around here. I first came through here around 2002 and there were patches of wasteland on the corner behind me where the sat on square tower is and then further along there was a slum community on the land where the Mahanakon Tower was built. The financial district was more concentrated up on Saton Road but as the years went by more and more office towers sort of moved into this area and it officially became Bangkok's Wall Street with lots of Thai versions of Gordon Gecko walking around with their braces, Filofax and Motorola brick phones and there was a story that the SkyTrain station took a bit longer to open than all the others because the workers kept falling asleep on the job. Not sure if that's true or not. Chongnon Sea BTS station has the honour of being the only station on the network to be built on top of a canal and the piles for the main station structure were driven into the bed of the Klong Chongnon Sea. I suppose they would have had to drain the canal to do that or maybe they built one of those coffer dams. I'm not sure, I'm not an expert in engineering. So if anyone knows how they would have done that, then please let us know in the comments. Well, you can't miss it on the skyline of Bangkok. It is, of course, the King Power Mahanakon Tower, opened in 2016. It's won fans the world over with its unique architecture, design, spectacular rooftop views, and, of course, the glass skywalk, which I went on to try and conquer my fear of heights, and it didn't quite work. I took two steps, and I was frozen to the spot, and they had to help me off while all these little kids were running around completely fearless. So I must say that was a little bit embarrassing. I do have one criticism of the rooftop, and that is evening time, when you want to go and have a nice cocktail, relax, listen to the lounge music, and just enjoy the views and the atmosphere. It's not really possible because you're sharing your space with tourists and all their families, and they take all the tables and chairs, so that gets a little bit annoying. I think they should make a new rule. Most tourists go up there for the sunset, so once the sunset's finished, kick all the tourists out and let it be a proper rooftop bar Alternatively, there is another rooftop bar which overlooks the SkyTrain. You get great views and live music, and that is Troc Ceylon just behind me. It's up seven flights of stairs, which is the only downside, but once you get to the top, it's definitely worth it. It's not actually open just yet because it's only two o'clock in the afternoon, but Troc Ceylon, I will leave a link in the description for you.
Well, that just about wraps up Secrets of Saturn Part 1. I hope you found it interesting, educational, or even exciting. Please do subscribe if you haven't already done so. Like, share, leave a comment. If you want to support me, you can do so via the Buy Me A Coffee link on the screen, or you can join the channel and become a member. That just leaves me to say what I always say. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in Part 2.